Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul of RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we begin with a Piper 1A launch and we'll also launch a Piper 2A uh, both of course going over to Mars as probes in order to fulfill the contract but they are really backups and you know getting more engine data and that sort of thing and um, after that uh, we have a larger mission that's sort of a test of various engines that I just unlocked and I'll talk more about that once that comes up and then we'll be aiming to fulfill the contract for orbital flight with maneuvers and 2 plus crew but I have to get better solar panels before we do that and the solar panel technology is currently unlocking so we need to wait those 14 days during which time the large mission that I'm going to launch to test out those engines will take place. So, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. So we'll see how this works out. In fact, uh, in the midst of all of that, we have to do this maneuver for an existing Piper 1. The engines I unlocked were the Proton engines, the RD-253 and the RD-0210, and uh, those had no entry costs for some reason. I pointed that out in the previous episode when looking at the tech tree, so obviously no risk unlocking them, uh, but I decided we needed to get some data points on them. They're fairly cheap, not quite as cheap as the H1, but fairly cheap, but uh, of course more efficient than the H1. But the question is what kind of reliability we get out of them. I don't recall the Proton having a whole lot of engine problems. It has a lot of other problems, but, uh, but I haven't really reviewed its history very closely, so I don't know exactly how often it had engine problems. Well, actually, more recently they did have an uh, issue, didn't they? But that was a manufacturing fault uh, after 50 years of building the darn thing. Uh, they, the entire batch of engines were messed up, but yeah, that's just uh, the current sloppiness, I guess. Let's make sure we're not staging those just yet. Now, I uh, just recently posted a rocket science video where I showed off a Lynx spacecraft and a Sagita rocket, and somebody uh, jokingly said that I should try and use it in my RP-0-1 playthrough and well actually I'll put it in the tech tree for later on but it'll be put in the tech tree for like 2018 or 2019 when it was designed so uh, we won't get to it for a fair amount of time but yeah I was planning to toss it in the tech tree I've tossed a whole bunch of stuff into the tech tree um, especially for the twitch uh, collaborative playthrough I put like my long march rocket. I have to put in the GSLV as well. You know, stuff like that. But yeah, sure. Why not? But obviously it's not going to come up for a fair amount of time because we're only in 1967 right now. And just for reference, February 5th, 1967, launching these Mars probes. Okay, separation. We've got to do that promptly. Remember the engine had problem lighting at some point when we took our time. And uh, we can wait on fairing still. I've been steadily testing out different timing for the launch. Uh, again, uh, somebody had suggested this whole uh, ascent start time thing, but I can't make heads and tails out of this. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. Couldn't figure that out particularly well. I need a little manual for that. Uh, I should have separated the fairings a little bit earlier. We're in a little bit tight for orbit right now. We should make it on this stage, but still. After that is an AJ-10 advanced here. Lots of Delta V. It isn't just a Mars flyby though, it is a Mars orbit, I've got to remember. And then the next launch will be another one of the atmospheric probes. 
up going a little bit out of control here. And we're not going to quite make orbit. All right. One ignition from the advanced. Though, uh, yeah, we do have uh, limited ignitions here. This is true. But uh, full reliability. So three more good ignitions remaining. And let's tune the antennae and do everything. Yeah, a transfer of 4,000 is fine. But let's double check what it's going to cost to make orbit once we get there. It's a 191 day transfer, which is pretty good. That's fairly mild. And it's going to take at about 2,000 to make orbit. We could get into a tight orbit too. And we should have enough delta V for that as well. Okay, looks good to me. So this was a good approach. Okay, settling the fuel down. And ignition. Oh, we've lost connection temporarily. Hopefully. Uh, I should have checked the ground stations before committing to this burn. We should pick one up soon. We're approaching the west coast, but will it be in time? I wonder if I can... well, it's too late now, but... Yeah, I guess we could have tuned the dish to a particular station, right? I'll try and shut it off, but I'm gonna assume that that's not going to be a thing. Oh wait, we're connected now. Whew. All right, just in time, just in time. All right, and a good shutdown. Oh, no, no, you don't have to turn. Just in time. They really need to extend the range of the stations on Hawaii or the West Coast just to bridge that. No, it's just a matter of we're, we're, we were really close to the planet. If we, were, we had been at 400 kilometers, it would have been fine the whole way. Just a horizon issue. Okay, well, not very bad. Okay, well, that's looking good enough right there. Yep, can't get too much better than that, so we're gonna have to turn. Well, I guess it's probably got enough solar panel re that we don't have to actually reorient for the sun right now. But, uh, yep, I'm not gonna dump the stage yet. This fuel is not going to run out, and we might want to give the AJ-10 one more ignition once we get there, uh, just to give it more data points. How are we doing on that? Oh, right, this one doesn't actually do test flight. My mistake. Anyway, 23 meters per second is 23 meters per second, and there isn't an additional probe core on here. So, it is what it is. What I would like is a dummy maneuver because we are not outside of Earth SOI just yet, so the next SOI change is uh, into solar space, so I can't just do SOI change. So that maneuvers there, add that maneuver as an alarm, and we are on our way. Okay, so here we go with the last of the Piper rockets, uh, Piper 2A. Uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Whoa, rocking back and forth quite a bit. So again, this is a heat shield mission to uh, have a Mars atmospheric probe, but also really a lander. And booster set. Okay, separation. And good thing I did not wait too long. All right. And fairing separation. Okay, well we've got an AJ-10 mid, and it's gonna have to complete orbit for us. Now the mid does not have limited ignitions, but functionally it has limited ignitions because there is a test-like configuration for Okay, separation. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, that'll have to do. Uh, we only have 3,925 meters per second as a result. Um, well, anyway, we will see what we can do. At least there's less risk of this losing connection because we have the communitrons here. Well, ASAP is 4,115, so we got into a worse situation than last time. But all the fuel is hypergolic. I'm just going to have it wait until this transfer in 38 days. So I'm going to create that node, and we're going to transfer it in 38 days. <laughs> That's how it's going to work. I'd rather make sure that we actually have the fuel for it. We'll see whether the test flight kills the engine in the meantime. Okay, I wonder if this maneuver node is sort of a similar thing. Let's find out this Piper 1 maneuver in two days. Let's get that over with. Okay, I'm a little bit confused by this alarm. I guess I must have left it in there even though it should have been deleted uh, because the alarm is in one hour and 31 days, but this has a node in 100 days, so... It is definitely not doing this part right now. Let me make sure that the node does get us there. It seems to. So no need to do anything right now. Let's launch the new rocket, but uh, after I add this alarm back in. There we go. Oh, it's right there. Okay, good times. Okay, so here we have our largest rocket to date. In fact, this is the only rocket, I think, that actually requires the 600-ton pad that we just finished construction on recently. And I've called it Gotron, because it's sort of like a proton, and that's what I came up with. Uh, we've got six of the RD-253s here, and then the second stage, well, uh, the boosters actually do separate on this. They're not permanently attached. And then the stage up here is the RD0210 and then there's another 0210 up here inside the fairing as our transfer stage. Uh, we're probably not going to get to that but this is supposed to send about a six ton tank over to Mars. That tank will make orbit around Mars using a heat shield and it's carrying a whole bunch of Aerozine and N204 and docking port of course and an antenna. Uh, but yeah, since we've never used these before, um, you know, test flight is getting ready to bust us. Oh, even the little separatrons have a test flight configuration, as if we needed more reason not to use boosters. Okay, uh, yep. So we do have the Centaur tank here. The form factor of this whole rocket is basically that of the Titan rocket, 3.05 meters. Um, the Centaur tank was pretty cheap to unlock, and it's fairly lightweight as well, so it made sense to use it. And, of course, uh, we once again don't have any tooled tanks above 2 meters right now. So, uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, and ignition of 6 proton engines. Certainly the core two engines will be burning way past their re and burn time. So this is probably, again, probably not going to work. Uh, we've already lost an engine, actually. That's fine, I guess. Uh, which one is it? Oh, it's one of the core ones. Well, we'll see what we have to do about that. As if the core wasn't already overburning enough. Wish we could transfer fuel from the core to the outside, but we can't. Okay. Separation. Uh, can the one engine hold it? Well, the one engine can hold it, it looks like. So we'll let it burn until it's done. It'll eventually fail. Uh, it's not really... We'll need to pitch up more than this. 
might not be a great idea. I might have to just shut it down. It just doesn't have the thrust weight ratio on it all on its own. Okay, yeah. And separation. Well, the RD0210 has started. still losing time to apoapsis. Let's just get rid of the fairings now. It's gonna be a tough way to orbit. I guess on the bright side at least the payload is just a big fuel tank. So there are plus sides to that. As you might imagine the thrust to weight ratio of this stage is quite high. We have to get to it first. Okay, separation. And this one actually ignited too. How wonderful. I think it'll just barely get us into orbit. Actually, just barely in orbit. Alright. Well, now that we've made orbit, the question is what are we going to do about this? And... Well, separate, obviously. We do have enough Delta V to transfer to Mars. I guess this will be sort of a capture test, maybe. That's the best I can think of for this. So, uh, RCS. And we might as well get those thrusters started. These are actually two kilonewton thrusters. And we'll transfer it over to Mars. Why not? So we have a plot, it's gonna cost 3,800 meters per second. We've got 5,546. Of course, the goal was to actually deliver the fuel, but oh well. And um, thankfully we have the docking port over here so we can control from it. Uh, it doesn't need fuel to capture, it's gonna use the heat shield here. So that's good. Um, this is a little bit weird, I hope uh, sometime... Okay, good, it's getting closer to prograde. You never know. I used MechJeb to plot the transfer, so it could give something weird. It's not impossible. All right, it's a long burn because they're two kilonewton thrusters and the total burn time is 16 minutes. If we use all the fuel, of course we're not. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're on escape, but the long burn time probably means that the burn wasn't particularly accurate. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Looks like this was a long trip version where we're meeting up with it at the descending node, which is fine. Uh, it looks like we've passed it. Yeah, we'll just have to make a mid-course correction probably. Well, I ended up making the node at Apoapsis because um, we had to adjust in a way that that made more sense, but still, uh, 866 meters per second, something was horribly wrong about this whole situation. Um, probably just because of the long burn time and didn't start at the right time sort of thing. But yeah, a lot of radial burn involved. And, well, by the time we get there, it's got to be basically an empty tank. <laughs> So anyway, we got the information on the Proton engines. Uh, well, they're not showing up right now, but uh, yeah, first time using those. And this was a worthy attempt to send something over to Mars. Who knows? But anyway, we'll leave this be. We'll take a look at it when it's time for its maneuver node. And now let me prepare the crewed mission to fill that contract finally. Orbital flight with maneuvers and two plus crew. Okay, well, I accidentally passed the maneuver node for the Piper 2A while time warping as we were building our new crewed spacecraft, the Valiant X. That's the Gemini spacecraft. Um, but I think we should be able to get a new plot anyway. So Mechjeb, mm, maneuver planner, it might be even better. Uh, ASAP. Well, that'll do the trick and that looks about the same. Okay, so we can get rid of that. 
So this is the one that we launched in this episode. So we're just going to finish the job here and start its transfer over to Mars. Okay, and here we go. Okay, uh, well this one is well on its way. And I think the only correction we'll need is in Mars's SOI. It's a long trip again. So, uh, yeah, we'll take this, add this alarm, and I'll call this one all set. A backup. Hopefully not a necessary backup, but you never know if, uh, since we are actually trying to land with this, and, you know, we have to get atmospheric science and transmit it. So, never know what's going to go wrong. Okay, now our crewed mission. Okay, so here we go. We are going to attempt the two crew with maneuvers contract again. A little bit complicated. We have to stay for three days in orbit between 160 and 400, let's say. And then move to a different orbit and stay there for five days. So, let's hope our engines work. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. Fortunately, even if one engine were to go right now, uh, this would still keep going up. So, right side. This mission had to wait for upgraded solar panels. Still don't have the solar panels that I'd really want, but they're certainly better now. I also added fuel cells. You might note the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. That's for the fuel cell. Well, we seem to have some oil off on the liquid hydrogen, I think. I didn't put enough for the entire eight days, because I expect that the solar panels are going to work. The hydrogen and oxygen are actually in the pod itself. Which I think is doable. I'm surprised that isn't a better protected tank that has oil off. Okay, we need to shut down two engines for G-forces. So now we're on just two engines. A little bit more dangerous. Okay, separation. And LR-105. Okay, getting close to the end of the burn. Yeah, we do have to overburn a bit. We want to get to a 400 kilometer apoapsis. Okay, okay, that's good enough. All right. Okay, is that a good? Yes, that's good. Our CSR. Ooh, ooh, the second stage explosions always with those second stage explosions so we're using these solar panels now i hope they don't overlap i think they should be non-overlapping with six of them they're each 410 watts which means combined it's 2.4 kilowatts which should be enough for the gemini spacecraft but we have the fuel cells to try out too not taking any chances on power this time let's see uh yep they're clear good Still very expensive to have six of them. Okay, start fuel cell. And that's maybe working. Let me start the other one. No. Stop fuel. Uh, it's got like two different fuel cells. Stop. No. Hmm. The fuel cells are messed up. The fuel cells are messed up. They said liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, but I don't think they were configured right. They also add a liquid uh, fuel and oxidizer option, so 
There's something wrong with them. See, that, that one says missing liquid fuel. Okay, stop. Yeah, that one. Okay, so this one is in theory the liquid hydrogen one. But maybe it's because of... I've, I've put the fuel up here. Because uh, this down here was a balloon tank, yeah. Uh, that might be the problem. It can't get the hydrogen and oxygen from here. Okay, well, let's optimize our solar input and see if that's okay. Still losing power. 2.46 kilowatts here. I haven't even activated the antennae. All right, how long can we last with 0.12 draw? I mean, and we have to go on the nighttime side too, so. No, it's just not going to work. We do have a backup one. Uh, it's getting, it's under construction. It'll be done in, oh, that's not that one. It will be done in 20 days. The contract is up in 35 days. Oh, it's recharging during time warp. Oh god, I don't like this. Hmm. Well, let's make sure persistent rotation is in charge, sun orientation, and SES on. Right. Well, we'll see how long we can last. Okay, do we fully recharge on the daylight side after passing through the nighttime side? Let's see. No. This is a net loss. Darn those fuel cells. And this is the best possible? Yeah, that's as good as that gets. I don't think I can fit eight of these on here. And I, I mean, yeah, I should have just put the fuel cell fuel down here. Now, if I had KIS or KES and I gave them a drill or something, they could like take the fuel cell off of here and put it onto the pod. I should have just put it up here, in fact. I'll edit the one under construction right now to do that. But I guess I'll have to wait until the next episode to launch. We're going to have to come down on this next uh, orbit anyway. We're not going to have enough juice. We haven't even lasted a day, just five hours. Well, all right. So orbit retrograde. Okay, decouple top node. We want to get rid of that cone. Though, I guess we're just going to slam right into it right now. Let's wait for it to drift off. Okay, that's good enough. Hardly using this service module, really. I want even better solar panels now. This is ridiculous. Okay, separation. I thought that was the separation of the service module hmm there we go well sorry about this we ended up with this basically the same sort of situation as last time forgot to account for the nighttime side I guess basically okay we're in the thick of it but g-forces are tame and they should be coming down soon. We are currently over the Pacific, close to Hawaii. Fairly appropriate place to uh, descend. Yeah, I mean, I guess just moving the fuel cell fuel or moving the fuel cells themselves so that they can draw properly will work, but what if they don't? What if it turns out that that wasn't actually the problem and it is actually the double configurations on the fuel cells that uh, I gotta mess things up? 
possibly I should add more solar panels, but it doesn't really fit more. And these are the best solar panels we've got. They can't be tweak scaled. They don't have tweak scale on them. Hmm. If I put eight, they'll probably overlap, so that's not nice. Okay, successful splashdown and recover. All right, looks like Philippe won't be ready for another month, but Naki will be ready in two weeks. That's actually important because we're planning another mission in 20 days or so, depending on rollout time, and the contract's up in 35. That does cause problems because we might lose an engine, and then we're going to be in trouble. But it looks like... Daffri and Nake will be ready for the the last chance at this contract. Let me just take a quick look to see how much the contract is going to cost us. 235000 So it's not horrible, but it's going to leave a bit of a bitter taste in the mouth. So let's try and not fail it. I'll make the necessary edits and we'll try again at the beginning of the episode next time. After that, we've got a lot of little maneuvers, but... Also, the potential for a Venus window, so we'll look into that. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.